Hello everyone, um, welcome and thank you for joining. Uh, today we will do a deep dive on um, SFMC Companion, the, the free Chrome uh, extension designed to support navigation and discovery in uh, Salesforce Marketing Cloud. My name is Zuzana. I am a Salesforce Marketing Cloud Architect at Deloitte Digital. And I am also a Salesforce MVP and the leader of the Poznań Salesforce Marketer Group. And our guest today is Cameron Roberts, the creator of uh, SFMC Companion. So, Cam, uh, would you like to quickly introduce yourself? Love to. Thank you so much. Uh, so you've done it partly for me. So thank you. Uh, you can call me Cam uh, as the, the photo uh, from a few years ago there. <laughs> and uh, the title says, I'm a marketing cloud architect. I've been in the ecosystem now for, I think this is my eighth year doing marketing cloud if memory serves. Um, like Susanna, I was a group leader, but I did have to give it up when I joined Salesforce. I've been working at Salesforce now uh, as a solution architect for just over a year and a half. Prior to that, I was working at a partner. And prior to that, I was a customer on the customer yeah. side using Marketing Cloud, sending it to all my subscribers. So I've done the trifecta. I've tried all three areas. And as I said, now currently working as an architect. Mm -hmm. And which one was the best? <laughs> Oh, depends on uh, <laughs> depends on many things. I, I do miss being a, uh, a marketing cloud champion. I do miss being uh, on the receiving end of some fantastic swag, I must say. Um, and I do miss attending events as a customer and as a partner as well. Having said the above, though, I did join Salesforce because like many of you, I have been to Salesforce events and they always do have those fantastic what it's like to work at Salesforce um, meetings and, and presentations. And I got to say, it really is true. It's a fantastic fantastic Ohana to be working within. Uh, it's truly a large global family of supports who are uh, including the product uh, developers, the owners of the product, the marketers of the product. There are solution engineers and architects all over the world. And it's a great family to be a part of. So I wouldn't say I have a favorite. Um, mm -hmm. They all yeah. have their absolute benefits. And in fact, for those who are looking to do their career in marketing cloud, I would almost heartily recommend to try out all three. I think you really do have to be a customer and feel what it's like to send an email and have your palms sweating as you as you press send because you just have to make sure that your RAM script is right and your data is right. Uh, to work as a partner, uh, to understand what it's like to take those requests from a customer and work towards their success, but also to work at Salesforce and see what it's like being on the other side of the big blue curtain uh, and seeing just how you can operate the, uh, the machine of marketing cloud from the other side. So definitely worth trying all three. I'm sorry mm -hmm. I can't answer your question directly, but from well, my did, experience, yeah. <laughs> it's, worth, it's worth trying all three. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, uh, let's move on to the to the next slide. Uh, before we, we begin, uh, just a quick note to ensure that everything uh, runs smoothly. So um, today's session will be recorded and shared on the Trailblazer Community Group's website and on uh, our YouTube channel. At the end of the session, there will be an opportunity to ask uh, Cam uh, questions about his app. So feel free to post your questions in the chat as we go or ask them directly during the Q&A at the end. Uh, lastly, don't forget to sign up for our um, upcoming meetings organized by the Poznań Salesforce Marketer Group. Uh, next month, we will do a deep dive on DE Select Engage, um, a new platform designed to tackle the challenges of saturation control and frequency capping. And in June, we will host a connections watch party for all of you who are not able to attend this conference in person in Chicago this year. Uh, once we have finalized the dates, uh, we will announce them on the Trailblazer community uh, website, and I will also post them on my personal LinkedIn, so, so stay tuned. Um, as we are speaking about swag, uh, as per our tradition, we have uh, exciting prizes up for grabs today. Uh, all of you stand a chance to win uh, Salesforce swag and certification vouchers. And to participate, simply follow the link uh, and fill in the form. Uh, don't worry if you if you miss the link now. I'll post it in the chat later as well. Uh, we have multiple prizes to give away and the lottery winner winners will be announced uh, at the end of the event so stay tuned to know if you're one of the lucky winners um, and now uh, without further ado uh, off to you cam perfect thank you so much so let's get started with the main event 
and I'll share up my screen and we can explore the SFMC companion together. So I'll share my screen now. What you should hopefully be seeing is we the do. main window coming through. Perfect. Thank you for the confirmation. So here we are now in my marketing cloud instance. Now I'll take you through a backstory first. The reason why the companion exists. So I am a marketing cloud architect. I spent a lot of my time uh, working with customers to help them through their success stories in marketing cloud. Marketing cloud is a beautifully big platform. It's got some fantastic features, but sometimes those features are really hard to connect together. And sometimes, especially when you've had a long history in marketing cloud with multiple business owners and product owners and partners and otherwise been involved in your account, it can get a bit messy. I'm not going to lie. You can sometimes get a pretty big buildup of intellectual property in your instance, and it can get difficult to know what's doing what in your instance. Now, one of the things I love to do is to help customers identify what their instance is doing. I love to work with customers to give them a bit of a health check and showcase what their instance is doing right and what they're doing not so right. And so by doing that, I spend a lot of time working with the customer and their team to understand what they're using it for, how they're using it, their business frictions, but I also spend some time delving into their instance. I go through automations, go through query activities, go through journeys and all that fun stuff. And it takes a long time, as I'm sure many of you on the call can appreciate, reverse engineering with not much documentation can take a while. And I'm yet to meet uh, many customers that do in fact have good documentation for the things they've built. It's quite common for an in-house team to build things and not document things. So I needed a solution. I was spending so many hours trying to get to success, trying to drive success, and all that time was being spent trying to just document what things were doing. So I thought, you know what, let's make something that does it for me. Enter the SMC companion. The goal being to make a companion uh, to help you to do the tasks that you otherwise do manually. We've all tried to find a data extension. Uh, we've gone through SQL activities and tried to understand where this query is getting its data from. And then you open up multiple tabs, you go and try and find the DE and you go through that way. It just takes so long, writing down things, screenshotting things, it took too long. And I saw that the interface actually has a whole series of APIs. There's a whole series of calls that your marketing cloud interface makes as you're using the platform. And I thought, well, why don't I make those calls myself? And why don't I use some regex and some other fun code to scrape over the data and start making some links. Think back to the old web you know, 1.0, some HTML, some literal hypertext links between objects so that when you investigate an SQL query, I can show you exactly where the data extension is that it's targeting or exactly what the source data is of that data extension. And what about imports? Well, same thing. I want to know what this import's doing, where it's coming from, where it's going to. Journeys, automations, all the above, all these things that you'd spend hours documenting. I thought, you know what, let's make this easy. Let's make an app that does it. So SFMC Companion is on the Chrome store and you can download it for free. I built this extension with the idea of security in mind. I do work with a lot of customers who work in sensitive data areas. And what I didn't want is a Chrome extension that requires third-party APIs and connections to offshore servers, and that sort of stuff. So everything the Companion does, it does locally on your machine. Now, for those of you who know security in the room, check me on this, check my code. Uh, you can actually inspect all the calls that the extension makes while you're using it, and you can see for yourself that nothing leaves your computer, except for, of course, the calls it makes directly to Marketing Cloud to get the information. And build it for a strong reason, and that is, when I do work with customers who've got very, very discreet and secure IT policies, I didn't want there to be a question of security. Data is paramount and your security is paramount. So all the things that happen in this happen on your device. All the information that the Chrome extension uh, downloads and uses for those connections, all is on your local device in your Chrome session. So nothing leaves your computer. So with that, let me show you how it all works. So once you've downloaded the Chrome extension, you can of course see it in your toolbar. I hope you can all see my toolbar here uh, as I'm showing my screen. I'm getting a quick nod if you can see my toolbar on the top here. Looking good, cool. If I do click mm -hmm. on it, does it actually show as well that I've clicked on it? It does. Yay, cool. Thank you, Bridie. <laughs> I can see you're dialing in from Australia. Good to see more Aussies in the call. Uh, the reason being sometimes then when you share, it doesn't show that. So perfect. I do have one of my current instances showing here with some downloads that I've already done. But let's start from scratch. Let's start from fresh. I'm going to delete my data. So I press my delete data button and all of a sudden when I reopen my extension, all of those things are now gone. I'm totally blank. It's a totally purged and truncated data set. There's nothing more to go. 
So let's start off how the companion works. I'm in Marketing Cloud. I've got my main landing page here on Marketing Cloud. I can open my extension and refresh my token to download the access tokens required. And all my green lights tick on there, as you can see. With my green lights ticked, I can now access the, uh, the instance of Marketing Cloud. Now, I want to show you some of the things that are happening here. If you ever want to check it out for yourself, you can right click on this window. And you can actually inspect the companion yourself. And you can see all the calls that it's making. You can see all the API calls that I'm making to download load those cookies and those tokens to then make those calls into Marketing Cloud. Of course, once we've got the tokens, we can then make some calls. And so the first call I designed was a folders call. How many times have you ever wondered where you've stored things in Marketing Cloud? Where all those things are hidden? Well, the first thing I wanted to make was a function that allowed me to get all of my folders. So this one starts to update now. There we are. It's going to start counting up through all of my folders. And it's a very simple function. It's literally just going to go search all the possible folder names and download them all into the Chrome extension. And when the folder's completed, it goes through and cycles through a few and done. I apparently have only 136 folders. If you're following along at home, I'd love you to try and log into your system and click on the folders and uh, post in chat who has the most folders in their Marketing Cloud instance. Let's see who's the winner. So the folders download can then continue through my other objects they may want to investigate through Marketing Cloud. So data extensions, of course, everyone wants those. Now, fun fact, data extensions are hidden, of course, in folders. One of the things I didn't want to do was go through and try and uh, kind of squirrel through every single folder hierarchy, every parent to child and all the way through, because Bridie on a cool two and a half thousand folders that would make two and a half thousand API calls into Marketing Cloud. And I'm pretty sure I get a tap on the shoulder from Mark Benioff saying, please don't, um, if I was making that many calls to every user in the world. So not great. So instead, I kind of cheated. And I actually just tell Marketing Cloud to give me every data extension that starts with the letter A, followed by a wildcard. And that gives me every data extension that starts with the letter A. And then I do it for the letter B and C and so on. Through every alphanumeric character that you're allowed to start a data extension with, I just cycle through that. Easy little hack there. And all of a sudden, I've now got, hopefully, all your data extensions. I'm only on 128 again. Uh, I'm not going to challenge anyone to beat me on that because I don't use my instance very much. But I'm sure there are those who feel a lot more than 128. I can continue now and get some filters. I'll get some queries. I'll get my automation. These are all much, much quicker, of course, because the payloads are actually much easier for me to work with, but also not as many uh, objects usually for most customers get my exports and imports and all the rest. Now, you're not meant to run these at the same time because it does make some promises through JavaScript, but you can if you want to. Then my JavaScript activities, my mobile filter activities, my events and my journeys, and finally, of course, my content and assets. So at the moment, this does work at any level, Claire, great question. This one's working on my enterprise one at the moment, but you can run this at any level that you want. It only operates within a single BU context. So it will not operate and search for children or parents of the BU that you're in. It just operates at the one instance that you're in right now. Now, a quick uh, fact that I am trying to build into this, but I haven't got there just yet. I'm trying to build in a BU selector tool. At the moment, if you do operate multiple BUs, all you have to do is change your context. So I can leave my Chrome extension here, change your context of your BU into another BU. And of course, then rerun the Chrome extension by pressing the refresh button. That will re-get those tokens and change the BU context to be that BU that you're looking at right now. If you don't change the context, it will keep operating in the previous BU that you were in, because it does have a, uh, an active BU function in the back end. I'm looking to make that into a drop down, so you can actually load in multiple BUs at once and select them on the fly. I'm just trying to make that work with some of the links I've got built in as well. There's a few things I'm still trying to work through there. With that done, I now have all of my activities that I've currently got supported loaded into the extension. As you can see, I have got a count and also a kilobyte usage. The reason being because Chrome is not meant to let you have more than five megabytes of usage on some apps. I do have the unlimited storage permission being added, but I thought just for fun, and since it's still in uh, very much an alpha testing, I'm going to include some size uh, functions here too. So I can see I've got 400 kilobytes of content. I know, super user over here. So I've now got all my stuff downloaded. What can I do next? Well, first and foremost, the biggest thing that I always had a problem with is trying to find stuff in Marketing Cloud. So search, simple as that. I'm just going to search things. I can literally type in an object. I'm going to type in Cam. It's going to run through a whole series of search gambits that I've got operating in the back end. It searches for names. It searches for contact keys. It searches for uh, external keys. It searches for components of objects. It searches for a lot of things. 
And so you will find it's not just going to return back the name of something, but also the URL of something or any other match that comes out from that string. I chose to leave the search string super duper loose. I didn't want to block your process by making you choose if it's a name or a key or something else. I just said, you know what? You know your instance. You type in what you're trying to find and let it do the rest. So at the moment, you can search for literally anything. It's going to return back whatever matches it. So I typed in cam. I apparently have my cam test API ZZZ. I'm very creative with my names sometimes. I've got a whole lot of dark extensions. I've got a whole lot of folders, automations, queries, imports, file transfers, extracts. I can just keep going. Assets galore. And of course, event definitions. It's all here from that search. I could type in welcome. Same thing. All my welcome related activities, including assets, are all here. So this makes it really quick and easy if you're just trying to find this one campaign you did a year ago and you know it's there somewhere, but you just can't find it. You can just bash the search query now. And remember, this is all on your local device. There is no API calls being made. All these objects, all this data is now on your computer. I'm using JavaScript to crawl through JSON objects on your Chrome instance. So the speed is lightning fast. And that's why I built it this way. There's no API calls being made, no waiting for things to render. It just all happens in real time. I was considering making this a on key update. It actually refreshes the entire page, but I thought I'll save a CPU and just make things nice and light. So as you can see, I've got my welcome journey DE here. So I can click on that and it loads up my page. Now, because my, uh, my token is currently active in my Chrome extension, my legacy token is still live. It does last for about 20 to 30 minutes. Because it's still live, it actually has made a call on this page, right? That's a fun fact. It makes a field call. You can see this for yourself by pressing F12 in your Chrome and going to your network browser. And when I refresh this page, it's gone and made my fields request just here. So it's actually gone and used my token. It's made a call to Marketing Cloud to update the fields API. And I can see for myself a preview of the fields all payloaded out here. Here's my field IDs. And of course, the subscriber key field, which of course is the first field. So it does go and make that call. And once it's made that call, it's going to save that data onto your device as well. So that when your token expires, it'll just reuse the cached fields on your device. So it does mean you can come back into this without having to log back into Marketing Cloud in the future. What I haven't done though, is that I haven't gone and made the fields call for all your hundreds and thousands of data extensions, because again, I don't want Mark Benioff tapping on my shoulder and saying, please don't kill my servers. Um, I want to make sure that it only calls it on request because it is a pretty heavy call to make. But it has got to make the call. That's the best part is that for documentation purposes, my architects in the room, here is a HTML table ready for you to go. Copy and paste, easy stuff. Screenshot worthy as well. I didn't spend a lot of time on the CSS, so I hope you don't mind, but it is screenshot worthy in my opinion. But maybe you want a little bit more. Maybe you're actually a really intense architect and you like documenting table design diagrams. So I have got this SQL for dbdiagram.io. Uh, it's a free web app. You can set up using your Google and it's all free. Uh, I actually do have my data extension um, data views built in the database uh, DB diagram here as well. The idea being that if you ever do want to go and build out a brand new chart of your own data, I can go make a brand new diagram in my database IO. I can go into my uh, extension here and I can see I've got my DB diagram code ready to go. I can copy my HTML and jump straight into my DB diagram, paste it in, and there it is, ready to go. It also means if I want to then connect that to other data sources, I can go back into my diagram and I can see it's the target of a welcome query. So I've got a welcome query here that targets it. And it comes from a journey DE that's referenced. Okay, I've got that one too. And I may have other fields it's bringing in from. So maybe I've got my uh, welcome SQL, it's a different one. I'm trying to find another DE that I can reference that might be a bit of fun. Maybe not, I'll go back into my search perhaps. And I'll search a whole new DE, let's just go cam again. And I'll use my cam DE, that's easy. Here's my super simple uh, three field data extension. Copy those fields and dump into my DB diagram. There it is there. And there's my two data extensions. And of course, subscriber key will relate to subscriber key. And so now there's my diagram. So if I'm documenting someone's automation, someone's you know, marketing customer view, I can very quickly populate out these records. Now, a great example that I've got is on one of my AMP script uh, demos that I've built uh, and on one of the YouTube channels. Uh, and that allows you to update your learners, uh, cloud learners and cloud beams. Uh, I believe it's called, there it is there, my AMP, there it is, put that in. 
and there's my data extensions. So straight away, I could get my learners, get my diagram, copy my learners out, go into my diagram, all right, start with my learners. I can go back and get my next learner set, DB diagram, build out. Now imagine you're an architect, imagine this is someone's instance that you're documenting, and imagine just how quick this is now to jump through and take out all this information, take it in, document it up, and all of a sudden you've done hours and hours of documentation, all these things that you can now sync up just in a minute. What's that, four data extensions I'm at so far? Fifth and final, here it is here, five DEs, done. Now I know that my cloud learners relate to beams, which have tags and roles on beams. And straight away, I can now say, well, a cloud learner ID relates to a cloud learner's ID in a one-to-many format. I know that my beams relate to a one-to-many format. I know that my beam ID, that way to that way, done. Was that 60 seconds? Documented. I wanted to make a process that makes things light and easy. There is no point spending time screenshotting things and faffing around with multiple tabs and trying to screenshot stuff and, and trim them up. I thought, no, let's make it easy. Let's make it relatable. Let's make it documentable. So through this process, you can see you've now got all the data we need. But what about if we need more than just data extensions? Again, I've got all the cool stuff here as well that you may want if you're doing a more technical design document. Uh, the ID, the customer key, of course, the location of the data extension, all is documented, again, all in free text. So you can copy and paste it, format it as you want. But I thought, what else can we do? What else can we do to explore your instance beyond the usual you know, interface you have in Marketing Cloud? Well, I thought automations. So I do believe I've got uh, a, automation, my CAM test automation. But to show you how cool I tried to make this, I'm going to jump into Marketing Cloud really quickly and jump over into one of my automations. Because one of the things I realized too is that you actually do use Marketing Cloud like Marketing Cloud, and sometimes you want an easy way to navigate things and explore things here as well. So I jump into my automations. I'm going to jump into one of my uh, public automations here, my test automation. You can see here it's a on-purpose failing one, but it's a pretty dense automation. This would take you a little while to reverse engineer, right? Because you have to go and search each of these activities and understand them. If this was in production, which I don't believe I've got this one currently live, it's paused. But as you probably know, a lot of customers do have live automations and you can't just pause them because they're doing things. So how can I document this? Well, Chrome extension and this little blue window pops up. This means shortcut directly to this activity. I've made the extension understand the context of where you are. And I can press that blue button and there's my test automation. Cam test automation, cam test automation, there it is. Conduct analysis, import filter, analysis, import filter. It's picked up all those objects and rebuilt them ready for me to go. Of course, I couldn't use the actual marketing cloud uh, assets. I had to go use paint. Uh, to make my own little icons there, but it still is the same activities. And I can straight away see how it's all matching up together. Now, a few of these will make a bit of sense and a few won't, but I'll step through them. I can see my contact analysis data extension. Now, again, I could have gone into my activity here and gone and explored it and seen it all in the context, blah, blah, blah. Or I can just click on it here and see here is my code for my contact analysis. I've got all my fun where clauses. I've got all my fun uh, else statements and joins coming in here. That's all great. And my target is my contact delete DE. Well, that's pretty important. Let's go find it. I can press that little blue button and seconds later, I'm dumped directly into contact builder to see that data extension. You can see here in the URL, it's got the exact location and here it is contact delete. Ready to go. 63 records in it. Here's my data extension subscribers, last send. If I go to my view here, Subscribe a key, last send, it's all there. So a really quick shortcut to go right back into your platform. But what else? Well, I have actually used some really fun regex uh, in the JavaScript here to pick up all of the tables that have been referenced. Now I'm not currently supporting data views. I'm looking to add it in as a future, uh, future feature. But for now it has picked up. Uh, of course, we do have a from all contacts. So I'm not gonna use all contacts right now, but I'm not gonna use all subscribers or messages because those are all data views. But I do have my Einstein predictive stores. There it is. And my contact Salesforce, there it is there. And I do also have a send, which is a data view. So it's picked up my two main data extensions in this SQL, and here they are. I can go see them. It's a synchronous data extension, good to know. That's my type. How many fields, there it all is, there's my diagram. I can pull that in and document it as I need. 
But I can now see that my contact Salesforce, this really crucial data extension, is actually being used in not just that one SQL query, but a few other queries too. So if I'm going to go and make changes to my Salesforce core Marketing Cloud Connect integration with Marketing Cloud, I'm going to need to have to do some regression testing on four SQL queries to make sure all these four queries are not going to cause problems. And I've got them all listed here because these are all being sourced and it's all recorded that as that regex expression. But I'll go back. It's also found that this SQL activity is being used in automations. And again, you can have one SQL activity being used in multiple automations. And so here it is here. It's been used in just the one automation, my CAM test automation. Great. Go back into it and here I am. I've got another one here. I've got my really big query, which is picking up a whole lot of random data extensions, but it's found them all. And you can go through and explore them all. So the goal here being one of the hardest tasks as an architect is to reverse engineer how these queries are being built. And this one does it all for you. Now, one more fun thing that I did not intend uh, to happen when I built this extension, but it did happen. And I think it's wonderful that it did, is as I built up the folder structure of your Marketing Cloud instance, it turns out there's a whole lot of really cool hidden things that you can't see in the main interface. And I'll show you what I mean. I can jump into my folder here for public, and I can see that I've got apparently 12 automations in my public automation folder, apparently. Is that true? Let's find out. In my public folder, and I do in fact have 12 automations in there. Cool. So it's built up that folder. But I can navigate backwards as well. I can go into my sibling folders, and apparently I've got a couple of other folders at the same level, siblings. I've got private, and I've also got my data factory. And yes, I do. And of course, there are no children in that folder, as I can see from the interface here. But what if I change my context and actually get some data extensions? Well, I do have in my uh, CAM really big query, which I think uses my CAM DE. Here we go, data extensions. So in data extensions, it turns out that I do have some child data extensions. Of course I do. My data extensions, and I do believe I've got my zero public. And then demo, and then birthday journey. So zero public, demo, birthday. All right, zero public, demo, birthday. And there it is, apparently, I've only got one data extension in there. Is that correct? Good one. But I can keep exploring. It turns out that when I go back to my data extensions, there's 36 siblings of data extensions. I don't see that in the interface, but it turns out it actually exists. And you may recognize some of these names. All of these folders are all there. They're just not shown in the context of Email Studio or in Contact Builder, but you can see them all, your filters, your measures, your A-B testing, they're all here. And you can go through and explore them for yourself. Where your scripts are stored, synchronized data extensions, they are all, all here. One thing I couldn't get to a plug in just right was collections from cloud pages because they're more like tags than actual folders, but you can still explore those as well through your content. So yeah, I did expect that to happen, but it does mean that you can actually go through and explore some pretty cool stuff. Now, documentation aside, uh, there's one more function that I built into here more recently that I thought was a lot more fun. So back into my extension, I built a new function here, which is the object report. Now I built this one because I know I've had a lot of questions that come from customers which say, how do we export a inventory of data extensions? Now, Gregory Gifford's got a fantastic blog and I do think a few other trailblazers have done very, very similar things. However, it wasn't to the full level that I wanted. I wanted it to be click and drag and drop and easy to download. So I made a data extension report, automation report and a content and asset report. So if you were ever trying to clean up your instance and remove some of that old stuff I was talking about that people way before your time may have built, here is the report to do it. I'll go data extensions and straight away, here is all of my data extensions. 128, again, not a huge user, but they are all here. Now I'm trying to build some more JavaScript into this, by the way, so you can choose which fields you want to show. I dropped these in just to proof of concept it. Uh, please let me know in the chat or on Slack as well if there are other fields you, that you would like to see. Uh, note that I can't actually include fields because like I said, I don't want to make the API call to ask every DE for every field. Uh, that's a bit crazy, but I can put in, as you can see from the screen, the ID and the key of your data extensions, great for referencing things for APIs. Of course, the name and its location, creation date, who by, how many fields there are, how many rows there are. Is it sendable? Is it testable? And if it is sendable, on what field is it sendable? 
So straight away, I can download as a CSV, by the way, in one click, and I can see all of my data extensions that are sendable as true. I can make an Excel filter, select all the ones that are true. And straight away, there is my list of all possible data extensions that could possibly contain customer data that could possibly be sent to. Pretty useful if you've got a customer deletion request, or perhaps you're trying to backtrack and understand where your data is sitting, especially if there are years and years and years old data extensions in there. Same thing as for cleaning things up. If they're not sendable, then of course they will not be deleted if you do a contact delete. I had this question much more recently. There is actually an issue where if you are sending a data extension as a sendable data extension and you turn it off sendable and then process a contact delete, because you have disconnected the sendable data extension uh, function, it will not be processed as a contact delete. So you'd have to go back into that data extension yourself manually to remove those records. Now, I'm going to try and solve that separately, uh, video pending on how to solve that one separately. But for now, at least you can go back and see which ones may have been used for sending or testing and where they are all saved. Again, that file structure is all there ready to go. Not just DEs though, of course, automations as well. Now I am working to make this more fleshed out. I have got, of course, the number of steps, the number of activities. Uh, of course, everyone has that main prediction one, which has heaps of stuff in there. But my test automations we saw earlier does of course have 14 activities across seven steps. So again, a quick export import to see how things are going, especially for a big health check for those who have a huge instance with pages with automations. Here's your status. Is it running or is it stopped? Note that ready means not actively running. So if it has scheduled, uh, then it means it's an actual active running activity. It's not a job. If it's paused or ready, then it's not actively running. So as you can see, there's a few that are not actively running. And finally, assets and things, of course. So I do have a content and asset report. The goal here being sometimes you, of course, upload loads and loads and loads of content. I don't know where those things are. I don't know what the actual asset looks like. The report here does it for you. Now, a few things to be super duper aware of. I've put in the file name and it will show deleted because did you know when you are in your marketing cloud uh, web studio doing cloud pages and you delete a cloud page, it's actually hidden, not deleted. So I do have some test landing pages and microsites that are showing as deleted, but they are still in the system. So if you ever make a whoopsie and delete a cloud page accidentally in uh, web studio in your cloud pages, they're not actually gone forever. You can speak to your account executive and get some support from the Salesforce team to resurrect your deleted cloud page. Fun fact. For all the content in Content Builder though, it does get deleted forever, so do be careful. Again, all the cool things are here, including the URL that is published. Uh, so for example, I do have a Marketing Cloud logo here apparently, and I should be able to open that URL, open up a new tab, and there is my Marketing Cloud logo apparently. So this asset list, again, is ready for you to use, so you can export and report on it as you need to. So with that in mind, there's one last really cool feature that I built in the last release that is definitely worth talking about. So jumping into my, uh, my screenshot here, I'm going to type in JSON and hope that I get some assets. And I do have some tracking pages here, but I might try a landing page instead. Here we are, landing pages one, two, and more. So. If I go to my landing page, deleted, of course, test page, not deleted, perfect. So here is a cloud page that I built, a test landing page, currently in Content Builder. Uh, it's in the collection of my test collection B. I did a video on this one recently. Uh, the goal being that you can actually move cloud pages around. Now, this was brought to my attention from a lovely member on the community in the Salesforce Market Cloud Developer Group. There is actually a hidden API to move cloud pages. So I've built that into the Chrome extension, which allows you to move cloud pages around. Now, why would you want this? I'm sure many of you have built preference pages or done some testing before, and you build them in a collection that's kind of off to the side because you don't want to populate a main production collection with your test assets and dev assets. The goal here being for some good DevOps, you can build in a test and dev collection and move them into your prod folder once you're ready. So here is a great example of a test landing page. And in fact, for posterity, I will actually jump back into my cloud pages and we'll go and check it out for ourselves. I should, in fact, have this test page in my test collection B. Check it out here, test collection B and test landing page. There it is. 
I don't want this in my test B. I want to move it somewhere else. And so by reading my very helpfully readed uh, warning message here, this is obviously a non-documented API endpoint. So being super, super safe here, this is in alpha, this string extension is in active development. It's a non-certified Salesforce endpoint. So please be careful. Um, the goal here was not for you to move your production things around, but for you to move your test and dev things around. So please be safe with it. But if you are happy to accept those risks, then you can tick the I accept the risks and you can choose to move it from one folder to another. I'll move it to my test collection folder and go move. If it says success, they've been looking good. I can move in and I'll go back to my collections, go to my test collection and landing page. I've just moved it. Go back and make sure it's gone. There's no rabbit in the hat. Nope. There's nothing under my sleeve. There we are, it has in fact moved. Now, for those who are curious about what is going on here, let's refresh this page really quickly. I'm gonna press F12, open up my Chrome extension. I'm gonna open up my console and you can see all the calls being made. So I can refresh again here and there's all the information that is happening on this page. You can see your cloud page asset and all the information behind it. You can see all the asset information behind it. And you can see that I have tested the endpoint. There is a valid token in use. So I can in fact make the API call. If I choose to accept the risks and then move the cloud page back to collection B, and I then will go to my network tab and I'll go move. There it is. Really quickly, those last two ones that just came in. I am recalling Marketing Cloud, getting the current cloud page, making a little change to it, and then pushing it right back. You can see there the collection ID 32492, 32536. Little tiny change there. And of course, the last modified date changes too. So if you're curious, feel free to inspect my Chrome extension. Again, I built it with security in mind. I designed this to not make off-prem calls. It's designed to all happen on your local desktop. But if you're inquisitive, press F12 and have a look for yourself. As you see from the console as well, I've got lots of error outputs that occur here as well. So you can check it all out for yourself and see all the information. I will try to clean this up as I leave active development and move into a more production-based instance. Uh, but for now, I do want all these outputs, especially if you do have any errors, I'd love to know because I really do want to make sure this Chrome extension is a very stable product. So if you do encounter errors, please let me know. Reach out on Slack. I'd be more than happy to have a screen shared with you and try and figure out what's gone wrong. But as for the SMC Companion, that is a bit of a summary as to how it works, what it does, and a few ways you can use it to try and save your time in production. Now, we do have a bit more time, and as, uh, as Rosanna mentioned, I'd love to have some Q&A. Mm -hmm. I'll run quickly through some of the questions. I think, Susanna, you've got a yeah, few I, if, that have been typing in. Yeah, I, I saw a few questions, so uh, I, can, I can read them uh, out loud to you. Uh, so first of all, thank you. Thank you for, for building this up and for presenting. It's really mind-blowing and super helpful. So uh, the first question from, from Claire, uh, if you are at the parent level, uh, is it searching the MID or the whole enterprise? So just the MID. Um, I didn't want to get too cheeky uh, and kind of spider out across the entire instance. There are ways to do that, but yeah, no, not just yet. Mm -hmm. uh, moving context in Marketing Cloud to re-scrape uh, that instance is a much safer way at the moment. Having said that, uh, if the opportunity does arise to make this into a multi-instance uh, activity, then I'll look into it. But for now, uh, the user's ability to change context is much easier for my ability to write the API calls to, uh, to do that. Mm -hmm. And I should mention actually on that question too, uh, for those who are concerned about security privileges, everything in the extension uses the user's interface privileges. If your login does not relate to C journeys, then the journeys won't work. If you can't see automations, then automations won't work. So it literally uses your login permissions. It does not use any kinds of backdoors or weird rule sets to get around things to make it work. It's locked to the user. So for those who've also asked, uh, but you're downloading the entire Marketing Cloud instance to your desktop. Isn't that dangerous? Couldn't someone then leave and take my IP with them? And to that, my answer is, well, hang on. You gave them the permissions to see content, to see SSJS, to see um, script, to see SQL. If they had permissions to see those activities, they could have already screenshotted your instance and copied your things to Notepad and same thing. This does speed up the process. Yes, it does brute force it through APIs, but there is nothing beyond the user's permissions that they already had. Mm -hmm. So as a safety takeaway, uh, if you're worried about permissions, then take a second look at your permission table. This will only allow the user to see what they are allowed to see in the interface. Yeah, it well, makes sense. Yeah. Um, next one. Uh, next question from Lakshmi. Uh, Lakshmi is asking, um, 
uh, are individual SQL select statements uh, pasted one after the other? Um, I'll double check, Lakshmi, if you want to jump on the mic. Good to see you, by the way. Thanks for being up late tonight. Uh, Lakshmi, do you want to unmute yourself and explain the... Try my best. Am I audible? Yes. Yes, you are. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Cam and Zuzana, for the session. Uh, I just would like to ask when you copy and pasted that SQL query in the left pane of some window, right? It's just the select statement. That's what I just wanted to check. Ah, yes, of course. The documentation of the data extension, that one. Yes. In the DB diagram. Yes. yes. Okay. So... <laughs> yes. Uh, what I should I should have my screen shared. My apologies. Let me just reshare that window, and I'll take you through what I think you're referring to. So, uh, exactly right. When I jump back into my uh, my extension here, I'm going to find a uh, SQL. So I've got a my journey here. There it is, and my SQL for the DB diagram. This selection statement is this one you refer to? Yes, Ken. Perfect. So this is for documentation purposes. So the SQL, it's a funny SQL. It's not real SQL. It's the SQL used by the dbdiagram.io to then copy and paste into this uh, format here. There is a really helpful uh, little info guide somewhere here. Help. There it is. There you can uh, drop down on the help menu and you will see some sample diagrams. And there is, in fact, some documentation to show you how this diagram tool works. Um, but again, it's a, it's a WYSIWYG, you type the code in and it allows you to then create these tables. You can do this manually. Uh, I did it manually to build out the data views, uh, view of this, but the goal being I found this to be the best free tool online, which allows you to very tactilely um, into, you know, get into your tables and rearrange them and make connections so that you can really visually represent what's going on with your instance. Now, for me, when I do have customers who've got very, very large, very, very old instances that have a lot of SQL activities that do things and take things from many folders and files, I wanted a way to represent that very quickly. And so I've been using DB Diagram. And I take a screenshot of what you see on your screen right now and put that into my documentation. But of course, to make this using Excel or using Google Sheets would take a while. So this is a great tool to do that. And so I made sure I built into my Chrome extension the ability to very, very quickly build up that information. So by clicking on that extension, you can see it's all straight away there. Thank you. My pleasure. Uh, okay, the next question from Claire. I believe this question is about the data extension inventory. So Claire is asking, I wonder if you can add when it was last sent to. Ah, oh, you read my mind, Claire. <laughs> I'm working on that right now. So it turns out there is a few hidden tables uh, that I've discovered um, that allow you to actually find out uh, when a, uh, an email was last sent and what data extension it was sent to. It's taken me a while to reverse engineer how that all connects together, but it does actually exist. So I'm working on currently a way of saying of your email assets, choose an email. And then from that email, it'll tell you what data extension sources it went to. You may be familiar with this. It already happens at the moment in your email reports page. That's the only place in Marketing Cloud that it has that. Um, the Discover Reports used to have it as a data source field. I think Datarama, now Marketing Cloud Intelligence, may have some of those features built in too but there was no other way to find it. So I'm trying to build that in here as well. So when you have an email, you can click on the email in my extension, it will tell you what it was sent, when it was sent and what data extension it was sent to. And I'm hoping once I can build that path, I can then flip it and do the reverse. By clicking on data extension, it then shows you what it was used to send to. Mm -hmm. Well, that so would be great. So working yeah. on that actively, I think it's very cool. I've had that question a few times, that's why I'm building it. Uh, this entire tool was built on time saving. Time is precious. We have one life. I do not want to spend all my time navigating through marketing cloud trying to figure out what data extension things are sent to. I would rather spend a few hours of my time making API work because if just this meeting with just these 60 or 70 people were all to save one hour by me building this, I have now added 70 hours back into this world mm -hmm. from my one hour of expense. That's a great return on investment. So I would rather build that in. So any more ideas like that too, please um, come send them through. There's a feedback form inside the Chrome extension. So please use that. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love to hear other ideas because I'm trying oh, to make this extension save time. There's one more from Chris. Uh, source data extension and last refresh date would be nice. Nice one. I think I do have modified. I don't know if that contains data load. 
Uh, I can see modified on this dark extension, which I think involves any change to the structure. I don't know about the import date. That's a good question. Let me have a look at that one for you. Hang on, note that here. <laughs> I'll write that one down. Okay, import date, I like that one. Uh, and then Chris, you had a second one, I think uh, was on there too. Last century, just like Claire mentioned, I'd love to try and build that one in. I'm working on it right now. Mm -hmm. uh, also, Brian uh, has mentioned on automation report, it would be useful uh, to have the run log of the last time it ran. Definitely. Now, I think I do have something that's along those lines. If I go into my SQL and automation here, I think it did have a last runtime undefined, so I've not run this automation. But if I go to my cam automation, I think, I think, let's find out. Last run. Apparently, I ran this on the 27th of February. 27th at 12 a.m., I think. <laughs> that may be the correct time. It's a couple of, no, sorry, wrong one. Uh, that looks like that could be it uh, based on time zones because I'm plus 17, I think, on my hours. So that could, in fact, be it. We can test this ourselves, by the way. Uh, fun fact, press F12 and press F5, and you can find out all the things that Market Cloud's doing by yourself. Here is all those uh, API calls it's making in the front end, updating tokens and doing all these fun things. And hopefully, as we scroll down, one of these ones here is, in fact, going to be that call to my automation. And I think it's that one, my entry. There it is there, apparently, completed date, 28th at 21 minutes, 21 seconds past. So I think it's in there. Uh, I may be able to pull that one back in. But it, mm -hmm. it is there. Yep. Modified date, yep. Uh, last run, active status, error. Of course it did. <laughs> I'll give it a try. There you go. Okay, great. Uh, now one more qu question from Claire. Um, uh, this one is about moving cloud pages. Uh, Claire is asking if the risk is in the moving or if the risk is after it has been moved. Um, uh, the risk is full stop. <laughs> <laughs> the, the risk is I'm using an endpoint that is not official in any way, shape or form. Um, it is an endpoint that exists. It is not being utilized by the UI, but it does exist. Uh, and it is actually documented in the API documentation, which is how I found it, uh, which you can access yourself, by the way. Uh, if you ever want to explore the API documentation, you can actually find it in the interface. Uh, so it is there documented, but it's not officially supported by Salesforce. As a result of that, the standing um, message on that is do not use it as it is not official. So because of that, I do not want to absolve any risk uh, of this extension. It is a very much in alpha testing piece, which is why I say play with it, have some fun, but please don't move your live production subscription center with it. Um, use it to move your non-critical assets around to clean your folders up. Um, I am working on ways to try and make sure there is some more robust uh, checks behind it. As you saw, as I demoed it a second ago, it does in fact do a couple of ticks on the background. It goes and re-gets the cloud page and then immediately reposts it back in to make sure there's no changes that are being made. So I have got a few things there that, that are make it as safe as possible, but it's not designed uh, the way that the interface would have it designed if it was an officially supported feature which it's not. Uh, so please wait for an official feature to move your important stuff around or use this to clean up your unofficial stuff. But again, that's also why that tick box is there. Uh, use extremely at your own risk. Mm -hmm. I should mention too, there actually is the endpoint. Again, you can explore it for yourself. It is documented, which you can find uh, on the interface. It is documented somewhere. Um, I don't want to point you to where it is, though, because I don't want to uh, draw attention to it, but it is there. And you can play with it in Postman as well if you want to try things out for yourself under your own Steam. Um, but again, I've packaged it up in a way that's useful, but still, again, very much in testing. Understood. Yeah. Uh, Samuel is saying, give that man an Oscar. So, <laughs> so <laughs> I, I fully agree. Uh, um, Appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, Very timely. Uh, I think the officers have just happened. Yeah. Uh, Felix, that's uh, Felix is asking. Um, we can load everything except for assets. Uh, it never, it never finishes loading them. We have a quite big org. Could it be the five megabyte Chrome limit, or have you heard of anyone else having this issue? 
Aha, good use case. So I obviously, as you can see from my instance, it's a very lean instance. It's just my basic testing account. Uh, having said that, um, there are some customers I know that are using this who have tens and thousands of assets. I have not heard this problem yet, Felix. So thank you for raising it. Uh, what I'll ask you to try and do is when you are in your marketing cloud and you use your Chrome extension, you click on it, you can right click anywhere on the Chrome extension and go inspect. And then when you do that, a pop-up uh, will appear. And then it's going to be a pop-up which allows you to see the dev tools occurring in the instance of the Chrome extension. Now, those dev tools will look very similar to this dev tool at the bottom of my screen here. And what I would like you to try and do is use the console or use the network tabs. Those two tabs, you can flip between them uh, in that separate window when you run the asset load. And that will show you line by line all the API calls that it's making. And when it fails, because obviously it is failing, it'll show you how and where it failed. What I'd love for you to do is to check it out for yourself. Uh, if you know your way around some JavaScript, then you should be able to find things pretty quickly and know exactly what's gone wrong. I'd love you to reach out uh, on the feedback form, which by the way, on the Chrome extension, you can click on it, you right click and you go options. And here is my super fun changes notes section, but also my feedback form and bugs. So you can click on that feedback form and let me know either some feedback or also any bugs you found. Because uh, this one is a bug, uh, let me know. What I also love is for you to reach out uh, to me on Slack because sometimes it does require a bit of backwards and forwards to actually diagnose exactly where it's gone wrong. Um, for example, I did have a user uh, over in America who was on Stack One. Can you imagine? Way back when. Uh, and it turns out the API endpoints of Stack One were a little bit different. And so I had to make some quick changes, which we only figured out through a little bit of a screen share and trial and error process. So if you do have a very large instance with a lot of assets, it could be timing out. I may need to find some kind of way to call the API a few times to let it uh, load all your assets in. I'm not sure, I'll have to have a chat. So try it for yourself, use that inspect tool. If it doesn't work, uh, you can find me again on Slack. I'm on both the how to SFMC and the SMC DG Slack communities. Links are both there as well. Perfect. Uh, next question from Daniel. Um, how does the downloaded metadata look like behind the tool? Is it possible for the user to export the raw metadata? The answer is yes, uh, but I didn't want you to have to go digging around uh, to do that. That's why I built the, the export tool. Having said that, you can see it all for yourself. Uh, for example, if I jump back onto my search here and you can even press F12 on search and then you can see your console and search. And so it actually goes through and it does all the outputs. And so for data extensions, it's found all these data extensions and here is all the JSON raw data. This is all the information that comes back from the API. I don't modify much at all. So it's all right there. Automation, same thing, automations with their processes and their parts and their steps and their activities. It's all there. You can see it all. Additionally, if you want to be really cheeky, you can jump into your Storage Explorer app. Uh, it's actually a Chrome extension you can download called Storage Explorer. And you can see all of the storage that I'm using as part of the extension is all here too. So again, this is all local, it's on your device. I'm only using less than a megabyte of total space out of five, uh, but you can also explore that for yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, great, next question from Robin. Uh, how did you activate the uh, inspect in companion button? Uh, it's great out in my view. <laughs> Ah, so it depends on your instance. Uh, for example, in this automation, I'm in this automation, and so it will let me jump straight into it with the inspecting companion. However, there are some activities like a cloud page. It doesn't work for that. So I can only launch into the companion where I know where I'm going. And the reason I know that is because my URL, if you can see it on my screen, it actually tells me the activity that I'm in. It tells me this is the activity ID. Uh, if you can see on my screen, C, E, T, H, so-and-so, so-and-so. So that's the key of my automation. Now, if I was to go back, I think I can type that in. No, that one doesn't work. Um, didn't have to search that one previously, but you can find it that way. Uh, it only works for assets that allow that URL pathing. So not every page in Marketing Cloud has that pathing because a lot of the pages in Marketing Cloud are actually iframes. And so it's not uh, promoted to the top level frame. And so you can't see actually where you are. So it's only at the moment for automations and a couple of activities that I can pick on as well. For the most part, unfortunately, it's not. Uh, additionally, the same thing goes for the linking from the extension back into Marketing Cloud. I can't get you to mobile uh, contact filters because unfortunately 
that activity is not a deep linkable activity. I can get to filters. I can get to direct sentences. I can get to a lot of these, but I couldn't find ways to get to some of the activities, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And now I believe the last question, can you explain again how the extension gets the user's token since I think I saw it calls API to do the magic things? <laughs> Very well summarized. It absolutely does do some magic things. So the reason it works is because the Chrome extension operates in the context of the window you're currently browsing in, in the current tab of your Chrome extension. So when you activate the Marketing Cloud uh, Companion on a different website, uh, it grays out the refresh because it says, hold up. This isn't a marketing cloud page. I can't do anything here. You can still search things because I've already I've loaded in my data already, so I can still search, but it knows I can't do anything else. If the URL of the page you're on is a marketing cloud known URL, then it says, hey, yes, we can do things here. And it allows you to activate those activities. Now, at the moment, it's best to refresh on the main marketing cloud dashboard landing page because it has the most activities in it. Um, unfortunately, that's just the way I had to build it. Uh, I was really hoping to make it a UI function where you could hover over activities and additional icons would pop out, similar to the Salesforce inspector for those who use Core. But unfortunately, I couldn't quite get it to work like that because I'm not that good at Chrome extensions and JavaScript. So I had to make it as a separate window feature for the moment. Um, but again, the token is then kept in your current session. And the reason it works is when you open up this uh, Chrome extension window, it's leveraging, even though you can see this window here, it's actually leveraging the underlying window. And so when it makes those calls, all the cookie information is actually kept and recycled through your current session. I'm not having to store any credentials. The only reason I do store the one legacy credential is to make those additional calls to move a cloud page and to call the fields API to refresh your data extension fields. I need an API call for that because both those functions occur on a not marketing cloud URL. And so of course, when marketing cloud receives the API call and says, hey, where are you from? And the response says, I'm from Chrome extension, B, C, N, it goes, whoa, credentials, please. I didn't know who you are. Where of course, if we make it from the Chrome extension on a marketing cloud page, it sees the referring source as being the same location, the same refer source. And it says, yep, I'll use the cookie, thanks. Come on through in a nutshell in the most non-technical way of explaining things. <laughs> Great. Thank took me a while to brute force that and figure that yeah. one out. It took a while, so um, a lot of trial and error. I've never met a Chrome extension before. This is my first one. And so it took a while to figure mm -hmm. out the ins and outs. Yeah. Well, the bottom line, I guess, is that it's really safe to use and it does everything in your browser. So, yeah. That was the goal. Uh, the only um, risk you've got is if someone takes your laptop because it's all on your Chrome instance in your Chrome session. So your only vector of attack is going to be a local access or someone who remotes into your desktop. And at that point, if someone's really going after your Chrome storage data for a token that expires in 30 minutes anyway from my cloud instance that you probably have other things installed anyway, I think that's at least your concerns. I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think they go for like your credit card details above that. Just my thoughts. Um, mm -hmm. And that's why I put the information where it is. And even your token's actually uh, somewhat encrypted and it's, it's somewhat hashed up. So it's not sort of free text either. Uh, I try to make it as safe as possible. Great. Uh, thank you once again, Cam. I think uh, that's it for the question. So once again, thank you for building it and for, for, for showing us today how to use it and how it works. Um, I will now share my screen uh, one more time for, for just one last minute uh, to announce the lottery winners. Um, can you see my screen? Yeah, okay. So now um, congratulations to all the lottery winners. Uh, sorry if I mispronounce any of the names here, but we have uh, Agnieszka, Anna, Dak, uh, Irena, Julia, Pablo and Rahul. And um, I will email each one of you separately, probably tomorrow um, to let you know what you have won and how to claim your, your prize. And uh, that's it for today. Thank you for joining us and until the next time.